गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई है discuss about the integrated farming systems it's uh, what is the integrated farming system what is the importance of the farming systems and what is the objective what is the concept it is all or i have already discussed now i continue this lecture uh, component wise this is the component of the farming systems uh, cropping system dairy units fishery units uh, bee keeping vermicompost poultry agroforestry and biogas one by one i will discuss Uh, next uh, this is the type of integrated farming systems this is some of these are the crop best integrated farming systems like crop live stock farming system crop live stock fisheries farming system crop live stock poultry fisheries farming system crop poultry fisheries mushroom farming system crop fisheries poultry farming systems crop live stock fisheries vermicompost farming systems and these all are best on the main cropping crops is the crop so this is the type of the integrated farming systems and likewise the uh, agri agriculture silvi horticulture systems agri horti silvi pastoral systems and home garden agroforestry system agri silvi pastoral system means agriculture crops growing with the uh, trees and horticulture crops and agri horticulture silvi pastoral means agriculture crops horticulture crops silvi and some grazing grazing means some pastures should be there so that if you have the cow in it then it it, it, it graze on the pastoral systems and next is the home garden agroforestry system this is the very unique system so we are the most of the farmers are using or publicizing here you can see the difference between the these two uh, these two pictorial uh, you can uh, differentiate that is the farming system should not be segmented it means it should be together or should be in the one pla uh, one platform see this here all the segments or the components is uh, maintaining the distance but in this platform all this uh, all the components are in together on the same platform so if the farming system is a concern so all the components should be in the same platform or or should be in the cross the factor determine the type of farming systems uh, if you planning the farming systems so that uh, there are so many uh, factors for determining the uh, farming system so, so these are the uh, factors which is the physical factors like climate soil and topography the different types of climate uh, climates depends uh, uh, the all the types of the crop cannot be grown the different types of climate so climate is very important for the growing of the crops Uh, next is soil soil is very important for growing of the crops because soil is mostly depends on the uh, gain the maximum yield so you can uh, you first you decide which type of soil should be there and topography topography is very important because the all the uh, uh, the the topography should be maintained because if the soil if the soil is undulating and it is chance to it don't have the fertility soil so the soil must be level so this type of the uh, physical factor you must know what uh, and decides next economic factor economic factor is very important factor for uh, formulating this integrated farming system like marketing cost labor availability should be there capital uh, land value because the all the lands value is different uh, is different because if the land is nearer to the urban its land value is automatically the high so the land value is very important for uh, this uh, determining the farming systems next is the competition for the enterprises the enterprises if you want to <coughs> incorporate the different enterprises those type of enterprises should be included which is very much important to the farmers or as well as the surrounding so you you must select the different types of enterprises which is very important for the uh, <coughs> importance for gaining the maximum yields next is consumer demands the farming system is based on the consumer demand if the consumer demand is more then you can grow the more crops of those type of crops you can grow which is more demands so the the crops growing depends on the demands of the uh, commodities so it is very important for uh, determining the farming systems and next the prevalent pest disease disease and pest is very important for controlling the 
the disease so that the maximum yield or uh, profit can be gained. So it is very important. So those type of uh, the disease which is prevalent in the region which cannot be in, in that situation the, the crop should be stopped or that, that type of crop should be grown which is very uh, <coughs> those type of crops should be grown which, is, which, which have the more tolerant capacity. So those type of crops should be grown which is tolerant having the tolerant capacities. Next is soil. social factor is very important for determining the farming systems. So the first uh, you, you, you should think about the social factor. Social factor means community. If the communities don't like that type of enterprises, then the, it is very difficult to interpret in that uh, enterprise. So those, the social factor is very important for selecting the uh, enterprises. And uh, the social factor, it, it, the people must have the cooperative spirits because the, if the people is not uh, like this uh, this type of enterprises or if the people cooperate you then it, it will be very better to run your enterprises. The next is objective. Objective you first you decide the objective. Which type of objective is there? If the objective decided then then the farming system is running very well. So you first decide the objective. Objective means income. In how much income you get from this system. So the objective should be very clear because the it should be less uh, imports and maximum profits this type of objective should be there in the integrated farming system next is availability of the resource and components the farming system run if the all the resources available there or all the resources should be used very much clearly or very much so this type of um, resources should be you can use very much or very very um, efficiently uh, this is the crop components. Crop components are very important for running this uh, integrated farming systems because this is the major components. The major components is desirable. If this, this cropping system is based on the uh, crops, crops uh, crop components. If the crop is uh, good, of crop condition is good, the selection of crop is good, then your um, integrated farming system will run very, very, very much. So the, this cropping crop component is very important, and this includes the cereals, millets, pulses crops, oilseed crops, cash crops, fodder crops, vegetables, and management practices. If the selection of these uh, crops is better, then all the, the waste materials we should be recycling in the system is uh, very good. So you first select the crops which type of crops we want to grow or which type of crops is recycled in the farming system. So the, this uh, selection of the crops is very, very important because if you have the uh, livestock, then there must be in the fodder crops because the crop is feed on the fodder. So there is one, uh, one plot or there is one, uh, one component, crop component that is the fodder crops which is very important and this system should be included in your farming system so that the all round, uh, all round uh, fodder should be available for the crops or for the livestock and the management practices management practices are very much very important because all the crops it depends on this management system suppose you are applying the fertilizers the which type of fertilizer should be applied it is depend on the soil types because if you concern the, uh, the Jharkhand states, then Jharkhand is most of the soil is acidic. So uh, this, uh, this acidic soil, which type of fertilizer you should apply? Because it is the acidic soil and all the crops should not be grown in the, this acidic soil. So you first select the fertilizer, which type, which type of fertilizer you apply. And uh, it is better to apply those type of fertilizer which, is, which contain the uh, calciums. So you apply, I think you apply the uh, SSP for the Jharkhand soil because SSP contains the 60% uh, phosphorus, 12% uh, sulphur and 20% calcium. So it is contain the most of the nutrients uh, which is uh, important for uh, applying in the acidic soil. So fertilizer management is very important. <coughs> and if you go through the recycling modes, then it should be applied 75% uh, through 
uh, inorganic fertilizer and 25 percent through the organic sources. So it is very important because uh, nowadays the, if you apply more uh, inorganic fertilizer, then it creates the problem to the soil. So it should be integrated mode. You go to the integrated mode. That is IN practices, integrated nutrient management practices. And uh, the management next management practice is the rhizobium cultures. Rhizobium culture is very important. This rhizobium culture is applied in the mostly in pulses crops. Because the pulses crops uh, fix the atmospheric nitrogen. If you apply the, this culture, then the, it increases the uh, <coughs> crop, uh, uh, crop yield. So rhizobium culture is very important for uh, applying uh, for treatments for the pulses, uh, pulses crops. So, the rhizome, the, so I think the people should be applied or it should be treated with the rhizome cultures. And next is irrigation. Irrigation is very important because uh, the water is very uh, scarce in conditions. Uh, <coughs> the, if you know the per drop, more crop should, per drop more crop should be there so that maximum crop it can, be grand, uh, can be obtained. And there are different types of irrigation systems. Uh, <coughs> which system should be applied in these systems? Because the if you irrigate the crops in flood methods, so then it is wastage of the most of the water. So it is it should be avoided, and it should be applied the new technology, new technology, new technology irrigation methods. That is the sprinkler systems or drip irrigation system, so that we can save the waters. Our irrigation water is <coughs> it is very important, and you apply accordingly to the critical growth stage of the crops. If the water is needed to the crops, at that time you apply the irrigation uh, stepwise. So the critical growth stage is very important for irrigate the crops. Uh, next is weed management. Weed management is very important because due to this weed, about 40 to 60 percent yield is losses. So the weed management should be done in the farming systems. And if you if you apply the some herbicides, uh, it, uh, it may be available to the markets or not, but uh, if available in the market, you apply the herbicides. Suppose uh, the in, uh, you apply in the rice, it, it is in pre or post emergence, both the herbicides are available in the systems. If you apply the pre emergence herbicides in the rice field, it is uh, the pre truck growth. Pre truck growth is very important herbicides which can control the weeds in the transplanted or in uh, direct seeded rice. It is pre-emergence. And uh, next herbicide in the rice is um, butaclots. You can apply butaclot pre-emergence and it is very important herbicide uh, the <coughs> nomnigold. Nomnigold is very important herbicide which, uh, which is applied in uh, post-emergence. That is uh, 20 to uh, 21 days uh, after transplanting or uh, <coughs> sowing of the crops. Next is brown manuring. Brown manuring is very important. Brown manuring is uh, the systems uh, when we in direct seeded rice, the dhecha and rice crops are grown together. But land is difference. After 20 to 25 days or 30 days, you applied or you kill the dhecha crops by applying the 240. So the, after applying the 240 in the dhecha crops, its color changes into brown. So that's why it is called as brown manuring. Brown manuring it adds the <coughs> nutrients and uh, about uh, uh, 5 to uh, 30 to 35 kg nitrogen per hectare. Uh, through this, the crop yield can be increased 5 to uh, four, 5 to 6 kilometer per hectare. So brown manuring is very important for uh, controlling the weeds or controlling the uh, uh, different type of crops in the uh, rice crops. And next is disease. Disease is very important because if you control the disease, they automatically the yield is better. So you you see the disease, which type of disease is there and uh, which type of uh, disease controlling method you should apply. So the disease, method, disease controlling is very important. And <coughs> If there is some uh, non-monetary inputs 
through this non non input uh, non monetary inputs you apply then automatically your yield is uh, you will get the maximum yield because these non monetary inputs not require the money only you only you manage the system only you manage the time uh, these these non monetary systems are uh, suppose your uh, <coughs> uh, timely sowing if you timely sowing if you the sowing is in time the automatically your yield is higher and this is the one type of the non monetary uh, non monetary inputs and next is the soil uh, sowing depth sowing depth is different types of uh, different uh, types of the seeds is required to the different type of soil depth if this uh, if the <coughs> it is um, seed size is small then it is required the solar uh, solar depth that is uh, the 3 to 5 cm soil depth if the seed is bigger then it require 5 to 10 cm soil depth so it is very important to decide which type uh, in the, it is very important to decide the uh, uh, sowing depth so sowing depth is very important for uh, germinating very fast if the smaller seed is sowing in the uh, <coughs> depth zone then it is difficult very difficult to germinate so it it should be its soil depth should be shallow and next is your uh, plant population optimum plant population if the optimum plant population is there they you surely you get the maximum crop yield so these, these are the non monetary and next is your uh, intercropping intercropping is very important because you get uh, this is the um, <coughs> intercropping where you grow two or more than two crops in the same, same in the same lands so intercropping is very important if the one crop is fair then the next crop is your uh, standing in the field so it is it is the risk covering uh, system so intercropping is very important and next is your uh, <coughs> you should uh, incorporate the pulses crops in the systems because the pulses crops if you incorporate the pulses crop in the system it automatically fix the atmosphere and uh, increase the your uh, soil fertility status so you must uh, incorporate the pulses crop in the systems and next is your uh, recycling of the waste materials this is non monetary inputs if you re recycle the waste materials in the system they automatically it is uh, reduce the uh, cost of cultivation so <coughs> by this recycling of the waste uh, <coughs> waste materials uh, it can reduce the uh, cost of cultivation next is your uh, <coughs> Uh, crop protection uh, crop protection is very important it is very uh, in this system if you adopt this crop protection it is a non monetary it is no no investment for money so you manage the cropping systems you can get the maximum crop yield next is the crop substitution <coughs> crop substitution is very important because you grow those types of crop which is more demand in the market so the, this uh, you substitute the crops which is more demands or you can avoid the less demand of the crops so maximum demands is very important and you grow the accordingly the uh, demands of the crops so the, the crop substitution is very important and next is the weed control weed control is very important because i have already discussed so the, for reducing this uh, weed control methods you can get uh, the maximum crop yield so these all are the non monetary inputs and these are the cropping systems uh, that is intercropping you see this is the uh, soybean plus pea and pea and th there are different types of uh, the intercroppings in, in in the jharkhands uh, in kharif season you can grow the maize plus uh, pea and pea one is to ones you can grow the maize plus black gram maize maize plus soybeans and uh, <coughs> and uh, your um, upland rice upland rice plus your uh, pigeon pea and pjp plus groundnut these are the crop these are the intercrops which can uh, uh, you can adopt in the farming systems and th this is the boundary plantation through this boundary plantation because the, it not required the lands you you just see you just saw the uh, crops in the boundary and you can get the yield so this way you can get the yield you can get you can increase your income this is the crops which can grow in the boundary the papaya 
मुनगामिन्स डोमेस्टिक्स बनाना गोवा साइट्रस करौंदा दिस ऑल आर द बॉन्डी प्लांटेशन क्रॉप्स दिस दिस नॉट रिक्वायर्ड द मोर लैंड्स दिस ओनली टू ग्रो इन द बॉर्डर बिकॉज दिस दिस एक्ट एज योर फेंसिंग सो ग्रोविंग दिस टाइप्स ऑफ क्रॉप्स व्हिच इज व्हिच रिक्वायर लेस और व्हिच रिक्वायर लेस लेस इनपुट्स growing this uh, this this type of uh, crops or this type of trees or this type of fruits you can get the maximum yields or you can increase your income from the farming system like why this papaya fruit crops this is the very important for the selection of the crops for farming systems climates if the climates if the rainfall is maximum then you can select uh, accordingly If the uh, rainfall is uh, less than the six, uh, 650 mm, then it can grow different types of crops. So there are different types of the regions: the uh, wetland situation, dryland situations, and uh, rain-fed situation. So the different types of crops accordingly you can select. Soil, soil is the very important because all type of soil is uh, the, all type of crop, all type of soil is not uh, fertile. so those type of crops should be grown where the soil fertility study is better so you select the soil which is uh, very important for growing of the crops so <coughs> the soil is the very important if you <coughs> if the soil is sandy then there is uh, you, you cannot grow the crops because in sandy soil the water um, holding capacity is very much so if the water capacity water holding capacity is is not there then the, you, the crop cannot be sustained so accordingly you can select the soils for the growing of the crops the soil should be sandy loams clay soils loamy soil this type of soil should be there so that the water holding capacity they hold the water <coughs> and this type of soils uh, having the soil fertility data is good so you select the soil which is very important for growing the soils if <coughs> If if the, if the soil is acidic, if the soil is acidic, then you cannot grow the other type of soils. Those type of crops should be grown, which is acid-loving crops, like rice. Rice can be grown in the acidic soils, and these acidic soils and the nutrient availability is which is very difficult. If the <coughs> the pH is low, then the the, the major nutrients cannot uh, available to the crops. So the NPK sulfur, uh, uh, NPK calcium magnesium sulfur is uh, available in the ph range in a neutral conditions that is 6.5 to 7.5 this range is very important for uh, available of this uh, npk calcium sulfur and magnesium so this this is the range of the available of the plant nutrients and all the micronutrients is available in the low ph except molybdenum molybdenum is available in the higher range of the ph so uh, so you decide the which type of soil is there and accordingly the, the crops should be this is for our research base uh, if the irrigation facility is good then the, the farmers can grow any type of crops and most of the crops most of the irrigation facilities is uh, done by the tube wells uh, actually in the jharkhand tube well or in the well so it is very important uh, there should be irrigation facility so that the crop can be grown and labor availability labor availability is very important because if the labor is not there then you cannot grow the crops because day to day required the uh, labor if you want to get the maximum uh, yield from the your field or your systems or your enterprises then uh, there should be a labor availability of labor if the labor is labor is not there then you cannot get the income <coughs> and this there should be machinations machination your uh, your farming system or your integrated farming should be mechanized mechanized means there should be different type of machines like uh, tractor should be there uh, harvester should be there uh, <coughs> seed drill should be there that is this this the cultivator should be there and harrowing should be there the all type of the uh, machine should, should be there so that you can harvest timely or you can sown in time so mechanization is very important for uh, getting the maximum or timely sowing of the uh, different types of crops these are the other factors like marketing facility the marketing if the marketing is not there then you cannot sell the your uh, product so marketing uh, facility should be there so that you can sell your product immediately to the market 
next the government support government government support is very important if the government if the government not support to you if the they very difficult to uh, give the your subsidize so you cannot uh, grow the or you cannot uh, take the risk so the government support should be very much important next the financial position of the farmer if the farmer side think the a good financial position then it can grow different types of crops or it can select the different enterprises so financial position of the farmer should be very much important next thing is risk bearing ability <coughs> farmer should have the risk bearing ability if you have not the risk then you cannot grow the crop you cannot take if you take the risk then you can grow this is the challenge and you take the challenge if you have not the challenge you cannot grow the crops so the farmer should have the bearing ability in farmers knowledge and skills in integrated farming system there are different types of components as this components it depends on the knowledge of the farmers if the farmers of the knowledge he can take all the things and it if the farmers of the skills he can take all the the uh, <coughs> different uh, difficult condition so farmers have the knowledge and it can have a capacity to take the uh, risk so the farmers have a skill capacity to uh, decide all the enterprises <coughs> these are the benefits of the ifs uh, integrated farming system it increases the productivity per unit area potential or sustainability if the system is recycled if the waste material is uh, recycled in the system they automatically it is the sustainability so the recycle of the waste material is very important next the balanced foods if the system is integrated farming system modes and there are different types of crops these crops give the balance that or balanced food to the farmers family so it is very important for getting the balanced foods from the systems and next the profitability properly is very important to provide opportunity as a crop insurance it provide the opportunity to crop insurance if you insure the crops then you can get if sometimes if the crop is fail you can get the insurance avoid the degradation and this is the if this integrated farming system is recycle of the waste materials or incorporate of the green manuring so it is very less chances to degrade the soil so you can get the maximum soil fertilizer status by recycle of the waste materials and this is the meeting the wood of further demands if this system is adopted because this system serving the agroforestry systems and fodder sequence and you, you mitigate this the fodder output so you can uh, minimize the your uh, the scarcity of the uh, fodder output and next the mitigating the rural urban migration if you, the integrated farming system is uh, running in the, your areas or your regions then it automatically the migration is stops because the in all the round all the round there is availability of the um, neighbors uh, i i think so in the if the good enterprise is there or running in the systems then the, the uh, 600 to 700 uh, neighbor opportunity is there so it is very important for uh, giving the opportunity to the rural people about 6 to 700 per year this is the advantage of the farming systems higher food production should be there increase the farm incomes through this recycling of the waste materials sustainability of the soil fertilizer status because you you are not uh, buying the uh, more fertilizer uh, from the markets because you are recycling the waste material in the system so the, your soil fertilizer status automatically increases and the, the integrated farmers to help the environment protection if you less uh, use the fertilizers then the, the environment pollution surely uh, the decrease through the recycling of the waste materials so it is very important these are all are the uh, importance of the or advantage of the integrated farming system uh, steps in the uh, enterprise selections if you want to run the integrated farming system so this is the steps uh, so how you can uh, take the steps so that the integrated farming system uh, can be run in your uh, region uh, you set your goal you set your farm goals because if you don't uh,
fix your goal, then it is very difficult to incorporate the enterprises. So you first fix your goal, which type of goal should be there. If the maximum, uh, if your goal is getting the maximum yield, then this, uh, then the, the different types of enterprises, uh, those type of enterprises is uh, incorporated in the system, which can uh, give you the most uh, profitable. So you first fix your goal. Next is uh, the prepare your inventory of the resources, and how this all the resources. Uh, from these systems you get and that's that uh, all the products how uh, how can you dispose it so disposal of an analysis it is very important so so uh, first you fix your uh, goal then uh, you take the disposal analysis so it is very important for before you incorporate or before run of the system uh, in your area and next is your selected suitable enterprises you select the those type of enterprises which can give uh, the maximum benefits from the systems uh, and prepare the farming system models, select enterprises, uh, implement the plants, you implement the plants, monetary wallet and you if you, you, if you fix your goal and you implement the uh, integrated farming systems, then you monitor it and you evaluate it and you will select if, if, if it is needed to change, then you can change it. So it is uh, volatile and monitoring is very important. Some enterprises for farming system, these are the farming systems and this is the main enterprises uh, in food crops, cereals are put there, pulses crops, oil seeds, cash crops, vegetable crops, fodder crops and tree crops, agro, agro forestry systems should be there and uh, this is the agri horticulture system, agri silviculture and silvi pastoral systems and this, this is the animal uh, uh, ruminants and a small ruminant. These all are the, the main enterprises. Through this you can run your uh, integrated uh, farming systems. So selection of the, these crops or your uh, enterprises is very important for running of the integrated farming systems. And this is the subsidiary enterprises like uh, fisheries should be there, poultry, pigry, duckery and these are all the subsidiaries which, is, uh, which should be incorporated in your system give you additional uh, income. So it, it is not require much uh, money or much intention. Uh, through this you can increase your uh, income from your farming systems. Processing units, if you grow the different types of crops, then the, there are chances to uh, install your uh, processing units. That is achar unit, muraba, it is, you, you can, uh, you can, this is the additional, uh, additional incomes from your systems. So these uh, processing units uh, add the, the uh, more income to your uh, farming systems. And other activities like uh, resource cycling should be there, composting is very important, vermicomposting. These all are the very important components to run the integrated farming systems. The integrators for the farming system different regions. These are the different types of uh, integrated farming system which is uh, already, uh, which should be run in the, the different areas. Uh, that is in a high altitude is called desert. The farming farming system should be pastures with frosty goats, uh, rabbits, and limited settled agriculture crops like millets, wheat. Uh, those type of crops which is which can be grown in the low temperature. Uh, so the this the, this is the in the high altitude called deserts. And next is westerns and central high, uh, Himalayas. In this area, the horticulture should be there and have a less intensive agriculture mainly on the hilly tracks of slope like maize because in this system the, uh, the situation is uh, sloping and those type of crop is uh, selected which, is, uh, which can be grown in the slopes. And next is eastern similarities. In this, in this area the, the, uh, the suitable enterprises is rice, millets, pulses crops, agroforestry, sushi, oblige, tigree and party, these all are the, should be incorporated in these areas. <coughs> and uh, like the arid and desert regions, this is central mainly in the Hema. Animal husband should be there, camel, sheep, and goats with the modern cropping patterns because these, these all uh, are required the uh, fodder or feed. So, this, this system must be run with, uh, through the, your integrated farming systems. So, all the, uh, the feeding material should be available from your system. So the crops, pulses and the different types of uh, crops which, which can be grown in these areas 
should be in carpotates. And as the endogangetic plant plants, this is the very intensive cropping uh, husbandry. Uh, in this situation, different types of crops can be grown. And you can incorporate the all types of drive stocks. And next is central and uh, southern uh, high, highlands areas. In these areas, uh, the crops should be cotton, sorghum, millets, and uh, different types of drive stocks. So, uh, you can include these systems. This is the western guts uh, areas. You can uh, see the major activity in the plantation crops uh, and uh, the livestock. You can uh, incorporate the cattle, seeds, goats, and different types of components in, uh, in this uh, livestock uh, site. In the delta land coastal plants, the rice cultivation is very important. Uh, fish, cult fish culture is there. So, in this uh, coastal area, fish cultivation is very important because there is no scarcity of the water, so you can incorporate the fish cultivation in these areas along with your uh, crops. This is the models, at first model for different land situation. Uh, the, uh, the farming system can be adopted in the different uh, land situations. If the land is wetland, then you can select your crops, different types of crops. And these types of crops uh, can be selected uh, in the land situation. If the land is high, uh, this, this is the if the land situation is different, if the island is there, then crop is different. And material is there. The all the crops, all the crops should be grown accordingly the uh, land situations. And this situation, livestock should be there: fish farming, goat rearing, poultry, mushroom, and gobar gas. Because in this system, if the livestock is there, then you can uh, uh, install the gobar gas units. Gobarus and the vermi compost and the, all the all these wetland situations you see you can adopt. In dialing situation, dialing situation and rainbow situation are different. We are the areas, we are the 800 mm. Rainfall is at less than one uh, 800 mm per year, then it is under comes under the land situations. If more than 800 mm per year, then uh, it is uh, under rainfall situations. So the crop selections or component selections accordingly the land situations. So the, in, in this situation accordingly you can select or you can incorporate the your integrated farming systems. This is the diversification models. You can diversify it. Diversified means <coughs> the additional incomes, the risk covering incomes or risk covering uh, the productions. If the net return can be gained or returns from these crops uh, in, uh, excluding your main enterprises it, it gives your additional incomes or you can aid the systems where uh, the more incomes or where risk uh, cover can be there so the in the, this diversifications the those types of crops will be grown which gives the maximum returns uh, along with your uh, main enterprises. So the, you can diversify the systems because if you have the main enterprises like field crops, vegetable crops, fruit crops and livestock and accept, accept these uh, main enterprises you can add, you can add in your system that is forest trees, composting, processing units, sericultures, mushroom units, these can add the incomes to your system. So this is the uh, diversification of your uh, integrated farming system. So there is a different type of uh, farming system and uh, through this you can uh, adopt the diversified models. These all the, uh, suppose you have the main system is live, live based farming system and main enterprise is dairy, poultry, piggery, rabbit, goat and the crops. So, uh, excluding these uh, main enterprise, you can add in your system that is milk and meat processing units because you have the dairy units, you have the poultry units, so you can uh, add uh, the uh, meat processing units or vermi composting units because you have the cow units. So through this cow unit, you can uh, uh, add the vermi composting units because the, this uh, the vermi composting units, the dung is come from your dairy unit. So you can add the vermicomposting uh, unit in your uh, in integrated farming system. 
So these all are the uh, diversified uh, 